So I can tell you to this point uh, in the uh, process, I have uh, used almost a quart of epoxy. And uh, Yeah, I'm just, I'm within a couple mixes of using a quart of epoxy. And then um, this is my 100th plastic cup. So I've mixed 100 times and a quart of epoxy. Now, all that information is completely meaningless, but uh, I just find it interesting. So I thought I would share that with you. I'm using my phone on camera mode and then flipping it around so in actuality I'm using it as a mirror. Okay.
All right, now we'll get this slipped up in here. Um, and then I'm just gonna get a clamp back here. And first we're just gonna kinda just lightly tighten it. We don't want it really tight yet because we wanna be able to slide this around a little bit. We just want it to hold it there. We'll go to the front. What I discovered when I was testing this out is it's just a bunch of gradual clamping um, to get everything right. And we just got to push it, make sure we're tight against the front. I can kind of lock this one down.
right, that looks great, so. I'm just gonna. Just get a little excess epoxy off here. Um, you know, I'm gonna come in here and get it out of here as much as I can now while it's still fresh, so. So somewhere along the line there, the, uh, the battery died. And uh, I'm not sure exactly where, but what I did was I, I came in here and once I got this all clamped and pulled in nicely and I made sure it was pushed to the front, I came back and uh, just kind of scraped out some epoxy that was squeezing out there just so I don't have to deal with a whole bunch of that later. I'll still have to deal with a little bit of it, but um, now we're going to come in with a piece of the RS-17 right here. And I've already marked where this goes. This end is not square, so that's not good. Uh, let me square up this end. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're square. So I'm just going to get this cut where it fits right in between here and uh, it's going to be right about here. that cut. Alright, so that's a perfect fit. Awesome. And uh, Alright, so this piece is going to get uh, some uh, mahogany plywood um, underneath it, so what I'm going to do is, uh, now the plans call for something different than what I got going on here. But they want you to actually take the rib out in this location and then uh, put this piece in here. Uh, I preferred to do it by just extending this piece back to here and then butting up this piece and then putting 8 inch plywood underneath here, um, which I believe. Um, is going to be perfectly uh, perfectly fine. So um, I just preferred not to take out any piece of the the two ribs here. So so I want to go about an inch and a quarter past. So we're going to go three inches on that piece, and then I think this will probably be the same. This will be about three inches. Yeah, three inches will be good. So I'm gonna just get some, uh, I'm gonna need, uh, of those. Not here. I'm gonna need one here. Basically, one, two, three, three of those at three inches. Fine. Let's get these. Uh, let's get these guys in place. This is a three-inch one, so I'm going to start with that one. Should have still have some live epoxy here. 
it's gonna kick start being unusable pretty soon so I need to use it right away so we'll get this butt joint here first some epoxy under here. clamp in the way right there. Which way can I move in? inch piece. All right, so this front piece uh, is a half inch. Um, it's half inch wide, and you actually have to relieve an eighth of an inch to account for the uh, uh, doubler up here, this plywood doubler. This piece I'll just end up stapling in place to hold it until the epoxy dries. Then I'll put some support, probably a piece of triangle or something underneath this corner. And then I'll probably, and then I'll put a little piece of plywood underneath this section over here, just to make it nice and strong. Not adding a lot. Uh, it's interesting, how the plans actually, they're not real, um, they're not real clear on this tank installation. Um, I'm sure, <clears throat> if you're going to build an airplane, I mean, you have to have some ability to kind of think beyond the plans. Um, I try not to uh, uh, deviate uh, from the plans if, if I can help it. Um, 
there are like the way I did the plywood in the back as opposed to cutting out the rib. It's just another way to do it. Um, and knowing that we're basically supporting this cover and keeping the cover from uh, uh, being sucked off the top of the wing, even though it's got screws every two inches, it's not likely that's going to happen. But um, uh, just thinking about what the purpose of it is and, uh, you know, so sometimes people say it's not structural, but uh, truth is everything you glue um, to this airplane becomes structural in some way. So uh, that's one way to think about it when you're making decisions. You are adding to the structure or taking away from the structure depending on, depending on what you're doing. So, all right, so we'll get this in here. And I'm just gonna grab my stapler. I don't need a whole lot here. Just enough to hold it. So I'm gonna try and get one right here. I think maybe I can hold it this time, so. Here we go. Just want that one to hold there. I'm gonna come over here and get this one. All right, so I just have a couple more, a uh, couple more things I want to do today before I uh, before I head out. And uh, so I've got the I've got this sanded uh, nice and smooth um, here on both sides where I've done this. And I'm going to use my uh, my flush bit on my router to take down this uh, plywood. And so uh, same as I did in this little section right here. Um, and then. Uh, that will be that will be it for the day. I'm gonna do both ends, but I'll start. Uh, I'll show you this one. Um, it's a little small router with a uh, with nice bits makes all the difference in the world. So um, it's an investment worth having. Like routing this is easy uh, instead of having to like cut that and sand it. That could be a nightmare. <coughs> uh, routing, uh, you got some routing to do on the fuselage. Um, so uh, yeah, nice little hundred dollar router, couple, couple three fifteen dollar bits, uh, uh, well worth it. So uh, yeah, so let's do this, and uh, yeah, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> so we got the same deal as before. Um, it's just that we're working with a uh, flush router bit that has a little bearing on the end here that actually rides against this surface, while the router cuts this surface, which is flush with the bearing. Um, if you haven't seen one of these before, it's an excellent tool. Um, so I'm just going to going to set this fairly tight so I can get right out to the edge. Where I've got about an eighth of an inch, and I think that'll allow me to scoot right out to this edge here and route that off. Yeah, lock it in place, plug it in, and off we go.
All right, so I could do <laughs> turning the router up. It's not the best idea, but uh, I could see better. It certainly worked fine. I was able to do that. This other section here was really fast. So I could not do the very tip, so I'll sand that off. Um, but everything else looks really good, so a little sandpaper on that. this part and I'll get that I'll get that after I finish the uh, finish the routing job so I got a little bit of filling to do right here I'll probably mix uh, sawdust and epoxy um, and or I'll do uh, um, micro balloons and hot or uh, C thin CA micro balloons hot stuff's like and you can still get it but it's like it's like for all of us old-time modelers but it's kind of like Ambroid, can't get that anymore, but uh, I've used that for years as well for indoor free flight modeling. Um, yeah, so I'm going to flip this around, I'm going to route the other side. Um, yeah, then I'll just uh, catch up with you and we'll wrap up here. All right, so I got all uh, everything I wanted to done and then I even test fit the uh, uh, test fit the aileron real quick. There's a few spots, I don't know if you can see these black lines I made. I've got to remove about a sixteenth of an inch both uh, both at the tip and the roots. Uh, I'll work on that later and I think I'm gonna have to go in and just some of these sections right here. I think if I take a, a the barrel circular uh, sanding thing on the Dremel and I just go in here and round these off uh, concave those a little bit that should take care of it and uh, and then we'll be in uh, we'll be in good shape there I've got everything here it's all clamped together and stapled and the routing uh, on this side couldn't have gone better uh, I feel really good about that got the aileron tips both of them uh, completely sanded and the trailing edge piece uh, here uh, rounded off, um, smoothed out, uh, all these transitions here, smoothed out. Yeah, making good progress. And getting this, uh, getting this tank area nailed down is, uh, is like, uh, really good. So, uh, I feel really good about the way I'm doing it. Um, I don't know if you can tell right here. The only thing left to do is just put a half inch I think it's about a half an inch piece of uh, plywood, 16th inch plywood right here on the trailing edge of this piece, which will line up with this right here. And go all the way over to here. And then uh, I'll have my three quarter inch inlay area here. Got it here, got it here. And then we'll be super good. So uh, yeah, be nice and flush. Uh, I feel really good about that. And uh, all right, so thanks for hanging out with me, checking out the video. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, I know I always appeal to the, those of you who are watching who might not be a subscriber and you'd like to follow along, um, just uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and then you'll get notified every time I post one of these. And 
yeah happy fourth of july and i will catch you later